What's up guys, welcome back to the Shadow Realm where today we're going on a little history lesson covering the original Series 1 Exodia and the epic new reprint it just got for the 25th anniversary. Alright what's up guys, yes today we will be opening up a box of the new Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG Premium Pack Quarter Century Edition. Now, there are multiple cool and unique things about this set, however in today's video I want to focus on one thing in particular. That being the ultra rare Exodia the Forbidden One in the Series 1 layout which you can pull in this set. Alright guys, so if you're not familiar, the Series 1 layout refers to the very first layout for Yu-Gi-Oh cards used by Konami in the original card game or OCG. These were also seen in the Japanese anime, the same cards that were printed were the same ones that showed up on screen. Among other things, the Series 1 cards are characterised by the large centred card image, two equal width boxes underneath the card art, one on the left for the card text and one on the right for the monster's attack and defense with the three Japanese characters showing attack strength and defense strength. There was also a distinct lack of any set codes as well as no Eye of Anubis hologram in the bottom right. So now that we have that out of the way, we can talk about Exodia. So Exodia the Forbidden One, not only one card but five separate pieces. Cards so powerful that if any duelers were either skilled enough or lucky enough to draw all five cards in their hands, they could instantly end and win the duel. This was the first alternative and automatic win condition in Yu-Gi-Oh! Made legendary by Yu-Gi himself in episode 1 of Duel Monsters when he defeats Seto Kaiba and not one, not two, but three blue eyes white dragons by believing in the heart of the cards and drawing all five pieces of Exodia. Uh, it's not possible! No one's ever been able to call him! Exodia! Obliterate! Okay, so we've established Series 1 cards and Exodia. Now we have to go back in time 25 years to 1999. Rewind to 1999 with the start of the OCG. Konami decided that the awesome power of the 5 pieces of Exodia was just too much to be contained in one set. Therefore, they decided to stagger the release of each piece of Exodia in 5 different sets throughout the year. Starting off with the left leg of the Forbidden One. The original Series 1 left leg in Ultra Rare Rarity was first released on May 27th 1999 in the Volume 3 Booster Pack. Remember this date May 27th because it's going to be important later in this video. Next up, the right leg of the Forbidden One was released two months later on July 22nd, 1999 in the Volume 4 Booster Pack. Next, the right arm of the Forbidden One was released in, you guessed it, Volume 5. No way. Actually, the right arm and the left arm were released as promo cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters 2 Dark Duel Stories Game Guide 1 and Game Guide 2 respectively. These were small guides that contained information and strategies for the Japanese Dark Duel Stories Game Boy Color game. So this is the actual Dark Duel Stories 2 Game Boy Color game. Um, I picked this up on one of my recent trips to Japan. It was all of 110 yen, which is about a dollar. So this was the original game in which the cards were included in the game guide that accompanied this Game Boy Color game. If you guys are interested in all and seeing the other stuff that I found during my Yu-Gi-Oh! trips to Japan, let me know and I might make a video in the future. Moving on, last but not least was Exodia the Forbidden One itself. The headpiece, if you will. The original Series 1 Ultra Rare Exodia was released in the original OCG Premium Pack. This pack was sold at the legendary and perhaps infamous now Tokyo Dome tournament on August the 26th, 1999. Now an entire video could really be made just dedicated to the release of the Premium Pack and the original Tokyo Dome tournament, but that's not really the point of this video. In short, just know that Konami way underestimated the demand for Premium Pack. The short supply led to a riot breaking out at the Tokyo Dome Stadium with two people being hospitalized and it's kind of an infamous event now. Okay, now fast forward to 2023-2024. Konami is in full swing with the 25th anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh! celebrations. They're releasing awesome sets left, right and center, cards, products to commemorate a quarter century of Yu-Gi-Oh! Among one of the things they decided to do was reprint the original ultra rare series 1 layout Exodia that we just talked about and release them in the same way they did 25 years earlier in 5 different sets. These modern reprints are almost exact replicas of their original counterparts. However, they now feature the Eye of Anubis hologram on the bottom right of the card as well as an updated Studio Dice signature, whereas before it was the Kazuki Takahashi signature. 
Both changes are quite tasteful in my opinion. It still keeps the original cards unique and distinguishable from their modern reprints, but in a subtle way, similar to what they did with the Ultimate Kyber Set Blue Eyes and the Jump Festa Blue Eyes. What you're actually looking at on the table in front of me are four of the five pieces of the new reprint Exodia in the Series 1 layout. Let's take a closer look. So the left leg was released first on May 27th, 2023 in the Duelist Pack Blazing Duelist set. Now for those of you who've been paying attention so far, this was the exact same date that the original left leg in Volume 3 was released on May 27th, 1999. This is such a cool detail from Konami that they decided to keep. However, I guess it wasn't really practical to keep up with this trend because they didn't do it for any of the other limbs that they released. The right arm reprint was next, coming on June 10th, 2023 in the Animation Chronicles set. The right leg was released next in the World Premiere Pack set on September 23, 2023. And the final limb, the left arm, was released on November 25th, 2023 in the Terminal World set. So here you have it, here are the four modern reprinted limbs of Exodia in the Series 1 layout. So taking a closer look, we can see the gorgeous ultra rare rarity. The quality of these cards are just amazing from the OCG. The foiling is just amazing. And as you can see, we have that beautiful Series 1 layout with the perfectly centered card artwork, perfectly even text box and attack and defense box. And here with that little update with the Ionibus hologram in the bottom right and that longer signature. So that brings us now to the final piece. We only need one more, being Exodia the Forbidden One itself or the head of Exodia. On February 3rd and February 4th of 2024, Konami Japan held a huge celebration of all things Yu-Gi-Oh at the now historic Tokyo Dome Stadium. The event across two days featured small tournaments, live orchestras playing music from the show, reenactment of iconic duels, appearances from voice actors, pop-up displays, mini games, there was a movie theatre, they debuted the Yu-Gi-Oh! VR experience, it was a huge event. Many awesome products were also created and released for the quarter century Tokyo Dome event. Now Strictly Sealed already has done a video covering all of these awesome products that they released for the event, so definitely go over to his channel and check out that video if you're interested. But of course, one of the products they released was the Premium Pack Legend of the Duelist Quarter Century Edition. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are so many reasons why this set is just so epic. And it's really one of the best releases Konami has done. So not only were the original 10 cards in Premium Pack reprinted in the set, but they also added 8 additional cards. The 8 cards they added were the prize cards and attendance cards given out at the original 1999 Tokyo Dome tournament, like the first place secret rare Series 1 Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. So these cards haven't been seen for 25 years. On top of this, almost all of the cards in the set can be pulled in five different rarities, including quarter century secret rare and some never before seen rarities made just for this reprint. Now again, in that same strictly sealed video I mentioned, he does a great job of breaking down the cards in the set and their rarities. So please go check out his video. But I'm getting sidetracked, this video is about Exodia. And of course, in this new premium pack, Quarter Century Edition, is the final ultra rare Series 1 reprint piece of Exodia that we need, and that's what we're going to try to pull today. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little intro and history lesson. So here we have the 25th anniversary premium pack, Quarter Century Edition, and of course we are searching for that final piece of Exodia. Now before we get into the box, the other four limbs that you just saw, I don't think they were actually very hard to pull out of their respective sets, the ones I just went over and mentioned. They're actually pretty reasonably priced on the aftermarket. They go for about 20 to 30 bucks each. At the time I thought this was an awesome idea and decision by Konami, not to make them crazy hard to pull. It keeps the cards affordable, it lets the collectors collect the original Exodia again, yeah, it's a celebration for the 25th anniversary. Just an awesome idea really. So the four pieces that I have, the ones you just saw, I bought those as singles for about 20 to 30 dollars each. I didn't pull those myself. Now fast forward to Premium Pack Quarter Century Edition, I was expecting something along the same lines. I wasn't expecting the head to be hard to pull. I was expecting maybe it'll be 50 bucks on the aftermarket. But for some unknown reason, Konami decided to short print the head and make it sort of like the chase card of the set. So the head actually goes for about three to four hundred dollars on the aftermarket right now, which is just insane and crazy. I understand it's the final piece of Exodia, it's the ultimate piece, and you kind of want to make it special, but at the same time, it is the 25th anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's supposed to be a celebration. Why wouldn't you make it just as accessible as the other pieces that you released earlier 
so that fans and collectors could collect the entire set and relive that nostalgia. But hey, I guess it is what it is. Because of that fact, I'm not sure of our chances today because I only have one box. So the chances of pulling the head are not great if, um, if I'm going to be honest. All right, guys, so premium pack Legend of the Duelist quarter century edition. Let's get this started. So this is the only box that I actually ordered. So we've got one box, one shot to pull the head of Exodia. So let's crack into this thing. Plastic off. And here we go. So we have 10 packs and four cards per pack. Um, so the set is 18 cards in the entirety, but the different variants you can get are crazy. But we'll kind of review them as we go. We're going to take our time because like I said, this is the only box we got. So let's try to enjoy it. Okay, so let's start with the first pack here. I wonder if I can open this in any way nice. It does have the long crimp on the top. So we try to open it from the bottom. And if we can't do it in a nice way, I think I'm just going to revert to the old scissors because I do want to try to keep these in somewhat of a nice condition. Okay, so first pack. Remember, there are four cards per pack. Um, but we have some really cool rarities, so let's have a look what we have. All right, so first up, we have a Goddess of Whim in Ultra Rare Modern Layer. A beautiful card. Next, we have... Ooh, Series 1 Serpent Knight Dragon Ultra Rare. That is beautiful. Next, we have... Ooh, okay, so this is a Trihorn. Modern Layout, Ultra Rare, but it also has... The Legend of the Duelist stamp in the text box there. So that is another of the five rarities that you can get in this set. And the final card in the first pack, we have a secret modern layout. Secret, what's this guy called? Um, Suru, Surupurin, I think this guy's called. Secret rare Surupurin. Okay, first pack down. Second pack. So we have 10 packs. So it's not the biggest booster box. I think normal, regular OCG booster boxes are 15 packs, if I'm not mistaken. I'm really trying to open these nicely without ruining the packs, but it's just me. I have a weird thing with packaging. Oh, okay. First up, Ultra Rare Meteor B Dragon in the modern layout. We have the Series 1 Ultra Surupurin. We have... Oh! Ultra Rare Modern Exodia with the Legend of the Duelist Stamp. And that's... It's close to what we want. We, that was close. That was close. And the last card we have um, a secret rare. What's this guy called? Something cannon. Da Dharma. Dharma cannon. Or something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him Dharma cannon in secret rare uh, modern layer. Third pack. Let's keep it going. We got close with that one. We saw Exodia. It is cool with the stamp. I think. Um, I think some of these stamped variants are some of the better ones in the set. Well, not, not the better ones, but some of the ones that are worth a bit more are these stamped variants. So we haven't seen it yet, but you can get a stamped ultra rare and you can also get a stamped secret rare, but we haven't seen that yet. Well, first card is the series one card. Is this different? The first card is a series one meteor dragon. Next up, we have Cosmo Queen ultra rare. Next up. Ooh, Gate Guardian Series 1 Ultra Rare. That is awesome. Wait, so we got two Series 1 cards in this pack. I, I thought, I wasn't sure if that was possible or not, but double Series 1 Gate Guardian. No way. That is so cool. Let's take a closer look at this. The quality of the OCG cards are just so good. Look at that foil pop as well. Oh, just amazing. Series 1 layout is just, it's my favorite. It's my favorite, honestly. The last card we have is, ooh, I'll hear, speak of the devil, Cosmo Queen, Secret Rare with the Legend of the Duelist stamp. So this is also definitely a very cool one as well. All right, next pack. I really have to say this set is just so cool. I think it is really one of the best sets of that Konami has released in the past 10 years, maybe ever. Maybe I want to say ever, like the nostalgia behind it, the execution, the... The rarities, the variants, just everything. And of course, that whole backstory that I just went through in this video with the Exodia pieces, that final piece of Exodia. 
So first up, we have Fire Wing Pegasus Ultra Rare Modern. We have Ooh Series One again, Meteor Meteor Dragon. We have Ooh, oh, what is this guy? Got a Japanese name, Mikazuki, Mikazuki or something. But he is um the Crescent Dragon, the Crescent Dragon in Ultra Rare. And we have Whoa, whoa Time Wizard, Time Wizard Secret Rare Series One. Okay, I'm hyped for this card. So the reason this is so cool, this was the original secret rare that was in premium pack one. This was the secret rare. So we just got the reprint series one time wizard secret rare. That is so cool. Look at that foil pop. Let's appreciate the secret rare time wizard. All right, let's keep going. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Um, what was that for? Was that the fourth pack? I think that was the fourth pack. Um, wow. That's so cool. It's just so cool seeing nostalgic cards like that. It brings such a huge smile to my face. Um, let's keep going with this is, yeah, this is the fifth pack. Ooh, we have a Trihorn. First card is a Trihorn series one. Ultra, that's cool. Ooh, hoo, hoo, we have Blue Eyes Ultimate in Modern, in Modern Ultra. Ooh, if we can, if we can hit the Blue Eyes series one secret, that's crazy. Oh man, okay, we have an Ultra uh, Cannon guy, Dharma Cannon, with the LOD stamp, and the final card is... Ooh, Secret Rare... Um, what is this called again? Dancing Elf. Secret Rare and Dancing Elf in the modern layout. Alright, we're exactly halfway. We've done five packs, we have five packs left. Do we have potential for that Exodia, or will I be waiting? I don't know how long I'm gonna be waiting for the price of that to go down, but it's it's pretty crazy. Three to four hundred dollars. They must it must be really short printed. Now the actual original Exodia head from the original premium pack isn't that expensive. It's not three to four hundred dollars. It's like um it's maybe I think two hundred maybe two hundred dollars or maybe in raw I think you can get them for under a hundred dollars. But all right, well I'm getting distracted. First up, we have a Five Wing Pegasus Series One. This is sick. Let's appreciate the ultra rare. So this was actually the third place prize card in the original Tokyo Dome tournament. And this is freaking awesome. We haven't seen this card in 25 years. All right, next up we have, ooh, Dancing Elf. We have, ooh, uh, Mikuzaki, Crescent Dragon in series one. And then we have, Oh, no way! Secret Rare Crescent Dragon with the LED stamp. Back to back Mikuzakis. Alright, we have four packs left. Maybe I did a really good job shuffling. Maybe the Exodia head is still waiting for us in one of these final packs. But let's wait and see. We have, oh, Series 1 Meteor Black Dragon! Speaking of the Fire Wing Pegasus that we just pulled, that was the third place prize card in the original tournament. Meteor Black Dragon is the second place prize card. This is sick. Meteor Black Dragon in Series 1 Ultra Rare. So we're only missing the Blue Eyes Ultimate in Secret Series 1 to get the first, second, and third place Tokyo Dome prize cards. That is awesome. All right, next we have... Ooh, Magician of Black Chaos. Ultra rare modern print. We have, ooh, Serpent Knight with, ultra rare with the LOD stamp. And the last card we have is, ooh, Exodia Secret. Exodia Secrets, no way. Oh, we, we're looking for, we're getting close. We're getting close, I can smell it. I can smell it, we're getting so close. I have a good feeling about this, guys. I have a good feeling. Okay, I'm doing a decent job of opening these without completely destroying them. They still, they still look pretty good. Ooh, wow, this is the this is the first Sengenjin we've got. The first Sengenjin is the Series One Ultra. That is awesome. I'm not complaining about that. But this was actually one of the participation cards for the original Tokyo Dome tournament. If you made it to the second round of the tournament, this was the card that you got. Original Series 1 Sengenjin, that is awesome. That's the first Sengenjin in any kind of uh, variant that we've seen today as well. We have Meteor Dragon in Ultra Rare Modern Layout. Ooh, Cosmo Queen Series 1, that's cool. Always like to see 
Doesn't matter what card it is, if it's series one, I'm excited. And the last card we have is, ooh, Meteor Black Dragon Secret with the Legend of the Duelist stamp. That is very cool as well. All right, final two packs. Let's get into it. We actually haven't seen um, a Quarter Century Secret Rare. You can pull Quarter Century Secret Rares from these packs. I'm not sure if it's uh, guaranteed one per box, because I know they've been doing that recently. They've been even doing guaranteed two per box if we're talking about um, the Quarter Century Chronicle side Unity set that we opened recently. That was two Quarter Century Rares guaranteed per box. But um, I guess this is different, but we haven't seen one. I wonder if they're guaranteed at all. That means I did a really good job of shuffling if um, we haven't got one and it's the last two packs. But ooh, 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 look what it is. Exodia Ultra Rare Modern Layout. Ooh, if we can hit the Series 1, I'm going crazy. Ooh, we have Series 1 Ultra Goddess of Whim. Next up we have ooh, Ultra Meteor Black Dragon with the LOD stamp. That is cool. And the final card is Secret. Meteor Dragon. All right, final pack guys. Final pack magic. Can we pull the Exodia? Let's try not to destroy the final pack here. Oh, all right, we've got it open. The last pack really didn't want to open for us. All right, what do we have? Last pack magic. Last pack magic. Oh, we haven't seen this card at all as well in the whole box. Frog the Gem Ultra Rare or, or um, Slime Toad. We have... Ooh, Dancing Elf Series 1. We have... Sengen Gen Ultra Modern. And finally, the last card, last pack magic we have... Oh, it's a quarter century! Our quarter century Cosmo Queen. 25th anniversary stamp. So the that was a really good shuffle job, I guess. We have Quarter Century Rare Cosmo Queen with the 25th Anniversary Stamp. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's not bad. All right, guys, so that's it. No Exodia for us. Um, I guess I'm going to be waiting for the price to drop on the aftermarket. But let's do a little review here. Let's review the box. Um, so we did get the awesome Series 1 Meteor Black Dragon and Five Wing Pegasus. Really all this is going to do to me is want to make me go after that Series 1 Secret Rare um, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon so I can have the first, second and third prize cards. So cool, but that's definitely awesome. The Secret Rare Time Wizard Series 1 was definitely an awesome pull. I love this thing. And of course our Quarter Century Rare was the Cosmo Queen. Not the coolest one, but still a cool Quarter Century Rare regardless. Um, but yeah, no Exodia, unfortunately for us. We did get this one. We got the Ultra Rare Exodia with the LOD stamp in the box. I guess this one is going to have to keep my other Series 1 reprints company for now until I wait for the market to drop a bit on this guy. But um, yeah, as of right now, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, that has been Premium Pack Quarter Century Edition. I hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed. Let me know what your favorite card we pulled was or what your favorite card of the set is and I'll see you guys in the next one.